Hello folks and welcome to our broadcast of the 2021 Equus Awards. It's a huge thrill for me to be here, particularly because I'm blessed to have a wonderful co-host in the form of Jessica Matoong, who people probably don't know is very much a racing woman. Good evening, Neil, and good evening to everybody at home. Thank you so much. Yes, I am. I'm an owner now. And three times, so you were telling me you almost got as many horses as the Alga Khan, uh, which is fantastic. And they're all doing well. Lovely. Enjoying my three horses. And I'm excited because Harold, the Duke, my first horse, will be racing soon. Well, it's very exciting. It's great to have Jessica on board with us. But of course, it is very much in keeping with the theme. It is National Women's Month. We honor that here at the Equus Awards and indeed across racing. And on that subject, women have had a tremendous season. In many respects, they've dominated. Lovely. It's, it's wonderful to celebrate the excellence. I mean, I see women like Candace Bass, who's done very well, 100 straight wins. Sure. Wonderful. Michelle Ricks, uh, who has been a great trainer. And then, obviously, as an owner, uh, Suzette Fillion, who's been a wonderful owner. And then, obviously, the stars of the show, the Phillies, who've done very, very well. And then War of Athena to top it all off, uh, oh. Triple Crown. You've actually picked up on all of those highlights. War of Athena, Triple Crown winner, Candace, 100 incredible. Suzette, we're going to talk to you later on on the show, and probably the highlight really Michelle Ricks winning the Vodacom Durham in July but there's another special reason why Jessica is here because it's her birthday month as well so an early congratulations birthday girl thank you and wonderful celebrations for us all around wonderful Jessica's going to stay with us she's going to take us through the award winners and announce them as we progress during our broadcast but we start from hearing from Natalie Turner who is the chief executive officer of the Racing Association Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second South African Virtual Equus Awards, where we are honoring the human and equine champions in our industry. Last week, the nation marked 500 days since the start of its nationwide lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This has created many challenges throughout the industry, but we are extremely grateful that we have been able to continue racing, albeit at times behind closed doors. In spite of the adversity faced, the role players once again unanimously agreed that it was essential to honour our champions. On behalf of the industry, I wish to thank Gold Circle, Pumalela Gaming and Leisure Limited, the Thoroughbred Breeders Association, Cape Racing and of course the Racing Association who have contributed to these virtual awards. The Equus Awards Committee was pleased to reintroduce the Equus Media Awards for the 2020-2021 racing season. The racing media has played such a vital role over the last 12 months. In particular, due to COVID-19 restrictions, they have been instrumental in telling the stories and expressing the emotions we may have missed in not being able to attend race courses in person. The judges for the Equus Media Awards are Neil Maurice, Howard Wright and Ravi Naidu. It also goes without saying that owners, trainers, jockeys and grooms played a vital role in enabling racing to continue and observing all the rules surrounding COVID protocols. Thanks must also be given to punters who continue to support racing and are an important part of our industry. It would be remiss of me not to thank the Equus Committee, the Judges Panel and Teletrack for the significant role that they have played. I now invite you to sit back, relax and share with us the pleasure of acknowledging our champions. Thank you, Natalie. Let's get straight into the awards and we begin with the Equus champion two-year-old filly. And the winning two-year-old filly is Rain and Holland. Staying with the two-year-olds now in the Equus Awards, and we move on to the Equus Award champion two-year-old Colt. Looking for someone to guide you. You were running for the door. Yeah, you were running for the door. And fear is a strong emotion. It's going back down at your will. And the 
winning two-year-old colt is good traveling. We are the mighty, no, we don't fall. We are the mighty, we don't bow down no more. We are the mighty, with the final blow. Oh, we break them down fast, oh, we break them down slow. No, no, we don't fall. Time for us now to move on to the classic generation, and we begin with the Equus Award for champion three-year-old filly. The winning three-year-old filly is none other than War of Athena. And now moving on to a thrilling category. This is the award. Equus champion, three-year-old cult. Through the blazing fire, roar like a lion. And for years to come, they'll remember our name. We've been knocked down. Our winning three-year-old cult is Jet Dog. Let's find out the nominations for the older Philly and Mayor Equus Award. All you gotta do is spread your wings. Together we soar. Tonight, tonight, we won. Unite, tonight, tonight. Together. Our winning older Philly Mayor is the sweet summer pudding. And here's a category that's very close to my heart, Equus Award for Champion Older Male. It's running up through my bones, burning through my wires. Think I could turn in the tide, letting go of it all. I'm going super side. Our winner for the Older Male is Rainbow Bridge. I'm electric. I think I'm electric. I think I'm electric. I think I'm electric. I think I'm electric. Time for us to inject some speed at the Equus Awards. We're going to the champion sprinter. I'm just sick of falling, I feel my heart is growing, I just want to let myself go. No more sitting, waiting for things to come and I can, all I know is... And our winning sprinter is the speedy Rio Querare. The champion Myla for 2021. The Equus Award nominees are... Our champion Myla is the winner of the Queen's Plate. 
Legit Talk. Time for us to look at the next category for the Equus Awards. Here are the nominees for the champion middle distance horse. Mistakes, make mistakes, yeah. But take the gift of a brand new day, a brand new day, yeah. Our champion is Rainbow Bridge. You're unstoppable, yeah, you're magical. Stand up, you're a star, a star, a star. You're unstoppable, yeah, you're magical. Stand up, you're a star, a star, a star. Racing loves the stayers, and it's on to the Champion Stayer Award for the Equus Awards 2021. If it's sweat or tears There's running down the side of your cheeks A shot of breath that you can't speak You hold your injuries like souvenirs Don't let them drag you down No, don't let them touch your crown No, don't say less than you deserve If they do Our champion stayer is the brass Get ready Time for us now to move on to the Equus Breeders Awards, and we begin with the champion broodmare, and it goes to Halfway to Heaven. Our champion stallion is none other than Give Me the Green Light. The 2021 Equus Award Champion Breeder goes to Claverflay Stud.
congratulations. Neil is talking to John Costa at our video wall. Let's hear his comments. Time for us to turn our attentions to talking to the champion breeder, the Equus Champion Breeders of the Year. And again, it gives me huge pleasure to welcome John Costa from Clarvenflay Stud to our broadcast. John, first of all, congratulations. Thoroughly deserved. And I know you guys have had, at times, as the industry has, had a topsy-turvy ride. But what a great comeback. And again, proven champion breeders. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Neil. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a, a phenomenal season. Uh, a little bit unexpected, I would guess. Um, but our three-year-old Colts have certainly uh, pulled the wagon through the drift for us this year. Yeah, and there are so many highlights, and I'll give you an opportunity to thank whoever you want to thank and, and haul out some highlights. But certainly, from my perspective, you mentioned those champion three-year-olds, which led you to, to running first and second, I believe, in the Cape Guineas. You won the Cape Derby. Famously, I think you ran first, second, third, and fourth. Incredible in the KwaZulu Natal Guineas, and of course a, a, a one and two in the Vodacom Durban July. I mean, this is pinch me stuff. No, it is Neil, and you know I remember sort of uh, a little way through the season, as it always is with the, with the racing scribes. They always wonder how good are the Cape horses versus the uh, the Joburg horses and versus the Durban horses. Uh, and you know, once we get to the Durban season, one finds out just how good they really are. And uh, it, it, it's been a stellar crop of three-year-old Colts this season. Uh, Phillies as well, of course, but I'm talking about the Colts because that's where we've been involved. And uh, I think you know, looking at the three-year-olds this year, if you look at the Phillies as well, you know, with uh, Athena and Sina's Ransom, I think South Africa's got a serious uh, three-year-old crop going forward uh, into next season as four-year-olds. Yeah, extremely exciting. Uh, John, from everybody watching this broadcast, everybody across racing, and obviously the Equus Award Championship, congratulations to you. My last question, though, to you is, uh, you can't name, obviously, everybody individually, but when you go to the sales, it's important that the buyers are there to support Clava Flay horses, and clearly they have been. So from that aspect, I'm sure you want to thank all of those owners that bought your horses and have raced them so successfully, and likewise the trainers who have trained them. Yeah, Neil, I, I would like to thank everybody in the industry in South Africa who are builders. You know, this industry has been on its knees. And um, as I said earlier in an interview, you know, I don't think it's a light at the end of the tunnel. I think the future is shining bright. You know, we need to tweak one or two things. Uh, and I just very shortly want to thank every single person who, who uh, contributes to the thoroughbred industry. Uh, and uh, again, I, I say, you know, let's work together. I'm very happy to see the NHA and Santa and are going to sit down and chat to each other. Uh, it should have happened long ago, but that's the kind of spirit that we need to have in, the, in, in this industry and in, in this country. Uh, so, you know, to everybody out there, a huge thank you. Um, you know, we're in your debt as breeders to all the owners, the trainers, the jockeys. This is a, an industry where everybody's in to get to the results. Everybody needs to put up their, their little bit uh, for the game. So from the grooms, from everybody in racing, uh, a huge thank you and I wish everybody a great season going forward and I really, really wish that uh, for South Africa and the South African breeding and racing industry that uh, we continue to breed these horses that uh, can make a, a name for us around the world. And the one last thing, Neil, never ever forgetting the horse. You know, God's most noblest of all animals, uh, all glory goes to the horse. Couldn't have said it better myself. Clava Flay Stud, Equus Champion Breeders. This year, Equus has made a special achievement award in the category of Outstanding Breeder, and that goes to Oldland Stud.
And the International Achievement Award goes to the Farfontaine Stud for Yulong Prince for winning the Grade 1 Kintala Stakes in Australia. I'm just so proud of, uh, of South African breeders. I'm so proud of Surcharge that he could go to a place like Australia, win a grade one, flying the South African flag very high. It really it made me a proud person to watch him win that race. And what I find most intriguing, you showed me a video clip of him preparing for that grade one race. He was actually jumping. I mean, that, that takes a lot of innovation and out of the box thinking. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, there he was going over the jumps and he's running on the Saturday in a, a grade one or a grade two, but he loved they it. They weren't small, eh? No, and he was going, he was flying over them. So it was, it was great to see, but he was a really good horse. He really was. And I don't think we saw the best of him and he left the country, but I'm so happy for the new owners. They got a grade one, they got their money back in stakes, and now hopefully you can go to stud. I don't know how many mares you'll get, Australians, you know. I don't know how many they'll send. Well, I hope that they're more than ready. Yes, well, let's hope he, hope he can do well at the stud. Age of Chivalry up to Buffalo River. Now Streets of Avalon, Chief Ironside, Olmedo and Yalong Prince down the outside and from the back, Cascadian. Age of Chivalry in front, 100 to go, getting tired. Yalong Prince, Cascadian, 50 stars are sweeping home. Yalong Prince takes the lead, Cascadian diving. Yalong Prince beat Cascadian Rock, Age of Chivalry. The Print Media Awards, great to have them back at the Equus in 2021. And we begin with the Print Media Award. And this goes to David Thistleton for his article, Ashwin Reynolds, Chuffed to be Part of South African History. And the Still Photography Award goes to Candice Len Ferner, one of our ladies in the industry, for her wonderful photograph featuring our rugby captain, Sia Colisi. And our Broadcast Media Award goes to Tawanda Tarunga for his piece, A Day in the Life with Justin Snake. In 10 words, why do you love racing? 10 words why I love racing. <laughs> Doesn't have to be 10. No, just uh, the feeling of winning. All that hard work into winning a race is just, you, you can't beat it. High performance code number one. High performers set high standards, refuse to tolerate mediocrity or poor performance. My father was a show jumper, he captained Western Province for about seven years. At 21, became the youngest trainer in South African history. I'll never forget the first place I stayed in Durban was the seaboard. We had a one bedroom flat where we all stayed. My brother and I slept in half a balcony. I'll never forget how hot it was. Then I started coming for my dad when I was about 20. I'd just come back from Australia, I worked for David Hayes. My surfboard, which I sometimes use my the cover for um, sleeping at the stables. I slept at the stables. And that's how I learned and how I started. When I was 25, I took out my own license. And my brother and I started with 14 horses. 14 horses. If you want to achieve high goals, 
you cannot achieve it without the groundwork done first. A lot of people just want to lead in the race horse, but they don't want to do the groundwork. Trainer Justin Snaith. Justin Snaith. Justin Snaith from Snaith Racing. They do a phenomenal job. They're fantastic to their owners. Justin Snaith, one of the most popular trainers in the country. It's time for us to honour the humans in our wonderful sport. And so we look now to the champion apprentice. The Equus Award goes to Kyle Stratum. Our award for champion jockey goes to none other than Niall Hewitson. Anil is standing by to talk to him. Well, the Equus Awards are all about champions and we are very fortunate in South Africa to have a huge and long history of champion riders and it gives me great pleasure to talk to Lyle Hewitson who joins us here in studio for our Equus Awards. Congratulations. Uh, Lyle, thoroughly deserved. You're the Equus Award champion jockey for the season and 264 winners. That's some going. Yes, yeah, thanks very much. Um... It's always a, a privilege and an honor to, to receive this award. And just as you mentioned, we've had so many champion jockeys that have gone to do so well all over the world. So to be on that same list uh, with them once again is um, quite surreal. And I, I think only when I look at it from that perspective do, does it sink in what an achievement it is. Well, I must say the only thing looking better than what you look like in your Fabiani outfit is the way you look on racehorses these days. Some unbelievable performances the, the whole racing community talking about your ride on rain in Holland which was outstanding but if I can ask you what are your personal highlights of the year and throw us some thank yous out there to horses that you've ridden successfully during the season you got me a little bit on the spot you know it's always a, a difficult question um, to answer but you know firstly you know there was a lot of talk um, you know with have, I had not won a group one the season, you know, so it's a bit of a um, almost disappointing championship win. But for me, well, I read a, I read an article, uh, a quote that said, um, "An optimist is um, someone who realizes that um, success can be a bumpy road, but um, at least we know it's going somewhere." And I think that's where what the season was. There was a lot of bumps in the road. We had a lot of our good horses set back, um, and then you know, right on the final day, once we got to the destination. Um, Raiden Holland managed to pull off that group one and I thought that was such a special win especially the way it, it went about the whole race was almost a, a description of the season things were going beautifully um, there was some hiccups and yet we still managed to get there in fine style so um, she was definitely a special winner for me um, she's a, a, a lovely horse and um, yeah on the brass for uh, I think a gold cup you know despite it being um, a group three, it, it's got the prestige of a group one race and for him to have won um, the gold bars and the gold cup, um, that, that was awesome. Um, it was a privilege to be a part of that. So um, they were two, two really nice horses and of course both from the Sean Terry yard who has been my, my in, um, through the years. Um, he's been a mentor to me and um, I was really privileged to, to learn of someone like him. Um, but I've had so much success for so many different trainers which I thought has made this season extra special. Um, you know, it's hard to leave people out and that's why I'm scared to mention names. But um, for me, the, the highlight of my season was the relationships built. So to all those trainers and all those owners, um, whether I rode your horse to run last or I rode your winner, it all culminated in a fantastic season. And um, I couldn't be more, than, than, more grateful than I am uh, right now to, to be here. Well, Lyle, congratulations to you. It'd be remiss of me not to remind everybody, and we all know, of course, that racing doesn't stop. We move from one season straight into the next. 
and as a result, we put the past behind us. We're honouring you as the champion jockey, but it would be remiss of me not to wish you, on behalf of not only Equus, but all of South Africans, you, the best as you move your career forward, going back to Japan. Um, tell us quickly an update on when you intend to leave and your expectations in Japan, carrying the South African flag, carrying the Equus champion jockey flag as well. Yeah, um, I don't know exact date just yet. I should find out um, pretty soon, but I, it will be um, before the end of, of August, um, as far as we know. Um, obviously, with uh, what we've all experienced over the past uh, few months with COVID, it's made things a lot more difficult. But um, yeah, that that is on the road, and I just expect to to sort of kick off where I left off last time, and hopefully um, we have as much if not more success and um, I just look to make South Africa proud um, overseas once again and um, do my family, myself and my supporters proud. Well, Lyle, you, we, we have always been a supporter of you as South Africans. We will continue to back you wherever you go. But for now, congratulations. You're a thoroughly deserved winner of the Equus Award Champion Jockey for the season. Thank you so much. Um, as I said, it's an absolute honour. Um, thank you to everyone that made it possible. I mentioned um, on Gold Cup Day that this season was about the people behind the scenes. So um, here's to them, well and to all the, um, the award winners and to all the nominees. Um, we all know it's a privilege. So well done to all of you and thank you so much. Neil is standing by to speak to our champion trainer and our winner this season is Justin Snape. So let's have a chat with our Equus Award champion trainer for 2021, none other than Justin Snaith. Justin, great to have you on our broadcast. First of all, from everybody in South Africa, all of your many, many fans, whether they be punters or owners, congratulations on the achievement again. Great, thanks very much, Neil. To the whole uh, panel at the Equus Awards, thanks very much for the, the uh, train of the year. Well, it was an unbelievable year for you because, as I'm sure you'll attest to, you had a lot of frustrations as Snaith Racing during the KwaZulu-Natal season. This is part of the problem, I guess, when you, when you raise the bar to such a level, expectations are high. And I know nobody puts higher expectations on themselves than you do. But having said that, probably not your best KZN season. You still took home the champion trainer status. <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like uh, it was like watching the Lions game there, might, there weren't too many tries but the Springboks won so that's all that counts at the end of the day and uh, results we, we in the frame as they say <laughs> yeah so uh, we found a lot of trouble in the Natal season the, the track's not as wide as it used to be and uh, you, there's always a lot of hard luck stories but this time it happened to us and next time it'll happen to somebody else so um, even with all that happening, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the Natal season. It's a big part of our operation, and I cannot wait uh, to prove uh, next season, uh, you know, maybe more of a, of a better showing. Just on a personal note, Justin, I know you are something close to a workaholic. You're certainly a perfectionist, and we move from one season into another. Do you ever get a chance to take your foot off the, the pedal and maybe leave Dad and Mom and, and Jonathan to do some work? Well, no, everyone, everyone works so hard. It's a 12-month it's a uh, season that we have. Uh, it's all changed. I, I um, have a fantastic team behind me uh, that uh, crack on when I'm uh, in the Natal season. I don't think uh, this next year around I'll spend as much time as I normally do in the, in the Durban season. Uh, I think four months is a, is a very expensive exercise. And uh, obviously there's also Joburg that I wouldn't mind having a look at. Uh, sadly, in Cape Town, we're a little bit weak at the moment, so uh, uh, I've got to make it up elsewhere. Yeah, and on that subject, I mean, you did raid with great success up here in Johannesburg, which was very refreshing to see. Uh, Rio Quirari, of course, springs to mind with a thrilling performance at Turfentain. Exciting year ahead, but I want to give you the opportunity to just pick out maybe some highlights for you from an equine point of view, and also obviously thank all your owners. 
Well, look, the, the, the Joburg Group one was very important to me because there was a lot of uh, talk from, uh, you know, your, your, your mates in, in uh, north of uh, the mountains. They were having a, a good go at me, telling me that I'm not participating because um, I'm not ballsy enough. So <laughs> I, I really wanted to be there to see their faces when Rio Kawari won. Uh, it was like taking money from Mike DeCock on the golf course. It was one <laughs> of those moments that you, you, you thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. And uh, it, it, it made it all worthwhile. So, and I want to thank those trainers for their, for their you know, wanting us to come and compete at that level, one pushing us. Uh, I wouldn't have done it if it, it hadn't come from them. So hats off to the trainers in Johannesburg. They, they like us here in Cape Town. They want as much competition and highest level of racing. It's very important to us. It's why we do it. And uh, I thank them for, for, for um, giving me the extra push. Well, I think punters and uh, racing enthusiasts are happy with that exchange. It makes it, it makes the landscape far more sexy and exciting. So long may that continue the challenge between you and some of the other trainers out there. But your owners, uh, you're blessed. Uh, they're blessed, of course, have you as their trainer. But um, you've got s tremendous strength in numbers and personalities. So congratulations to you and your entire team extending to your owners. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, you couldn't have harder times in South Africa at the moment. And for me, the South African owners and my patrons have been un unbelievable through these hardest times. And they just continue to support us, uh, support South African racing. So to all my clients, I just want to thank you for the endless support that you've given us. To my team, my family, uh, who are obviously the, the, the stronghold in, in our team, uh, Jonathan, Chris, uh, everybody, they, they, there's never a day that goes by that they're not involved in the yard. Uh, it's our happy place. To all my staff, um, Janine, who's the strongest assistant that I think I've ever had. Andrea, that handles all our problems. She's a machine. Megan, that you've seen in, in the tell. Uh, Newly, Louis and Shane, and it's a big operation to Patrick, uh, Coscorner. Uh, Coscorner is the first um, local boy that is now running his own yard under me with 50 horses, so I think it's a very exciting initiative and uh, he's, he's booting home the winners uh, uh, while we're just guiding him and uh, keeping an eye on the whole situation. To the jockeys that help us a lot as well, you know, it, for them, it's, it's been a risky uh, for them traveling and stuff like that. We thank them and to, um, to the horses, the horses that we have just I work so hard because I don't want punters or the public to feel bad about them when they run badly or disappointed. Uh, there's nothing worse for me than walking away from a meeting and they're saying that uh, they'd do it again, it's not the horse that they thought he was or speed machine or anything like that. Uh, I take it very personally and I take it to heart and I do this so that they are the, the great champions that they deserve to be. Justin Snaith, thank you very much for talking to us. And again, on behalf Neil, of Equus... I one more person. Yes. Sorry, Neil. Before I forget, I just want to thank John Freeman. Obviously, he handles all our, our equine side of everything. Uh, he ensures that I never say a bad thing about one of his stallions. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's a great part of the team. He brings uh, uh, a, a very stable side and experience and... Uh, we certainly wouldn't be here without his, his efforts. Well, thanks for adding um, John Freeman to that mix. So many to congratulate, but we congratulate you, Justin Snaith, heading up, of course, Snaith Racing, and they are the champion trainer of 2021. As an owner myself, I'm delighted to announce the winner of this category. Our champion owner is Suzette Balloon. Well, it gives me great personal pleasure and an absolute privilege now to talk to the champion Equus Award Owner of the Year. And of course, that is none other than Suzette Fulyun. And Suzette joins us on our Zoom line. Suzette, congratulations. You are the Equus Award Champion Owner. Well done. Yeah, it's um, absolutely wonderful. You know, I can't, can't even start to begin to thank everybody that, um, you know, just pulled together 
started racing on for the win, um, cheering me on. Every person in, in racing, trainers, you know, owners, um, the people watching races, racing, everybody in the community going crazy and sending messages and actually, um, you know, help with, with supporting me and making it so much better for having nails left. Yes. <laughs> well, congratulations to you and Barcy. Long may it continue. We're into a new season and I hope those winners keep flowing. Well, Jessica spoke briefly about being excited to give the Owners Award to Suzette. And now it gives me great pleasure to give this award because as a man who has been so integral in my own career in horse racing and to be honoured as he has been by the Equus this season is fantastic. It's a special achievement award for Equus 2021 and it goes to Graham Hawkins. And for the case of our jockey club, Hong Kong Jockey Club, let's introduce you to Graham Hawkins. Graham, you've been in the game for a long time. In fact, you could probably write a couple of books about racing. Let's tell us a little bit about your career, where it started and, and how you got into this game. Well, I started out in uh, 1977 as a race caller in the Western Cape, apprentice race caller at the time, I must say, um, and uh, continued to call in the Western Cape uh, through until about 1983 when I was approached by the Heifeld Racing Clubs to join them up on, uh, in Johannesburg. And I was there for the next 25 years and then moved to Durban in 2008. Not as a race caller at this stage, I had retired from race calling. I continued to act as an auctioneer at the various horse sales around the country, uh, both for yelling sales and mixed blood stock sales. Uh, but I was the racing executive, I was appointed racing executive for, for Gold Circle in 2008 and uh, a position which I held until a couple of years ago then uh, as part of our succession planning because I'm now at retirement age, uh, that role was taken over by Raf Sheikh. Yes, so for 40 odd years I've been involved in the wonderful sport of horse racing here in South Africa and it's been an absolutely great ride. I've had the opportunity obviously to visit Hong Kong, to visit other parts of the world often as a, a delegate for Gold Circle at the various Asian racing conferences around the world. Uh, was down at the most recent one in February, pre-COVID, <laughs> down in, the, in Cape Town, also representing Gold Circle. So yeah, it's been a wonderful ride. In terms of your breeding record as well, because you've been at the TBA for a long time, so you understand pedigrees, you were very early days there, you were very in, an integral part of the Bloodstock South Africa and, and Team Thoroughbred Breeders Association. Yes, when I moved from the Cape in 1983, I actually moved to the High Felt in a dual role as the sales and marketing manager for the Thoroughbred Breeders Association, replacing then Roger Rennie, because race calling is not a full-time occupation. So I kind of had a dual role for 25 years in, in Johannesburg and uh, as, as the sales and marketing manager, stroke auctioneer for the Thoroughbred Breeders Association, commentator for the High Felt Racing Clubs. Then when Pumalela came into being, uh, in 2002, I was appointed racing executive for Pumalela, a position which I held until I moved to Gold Circle in 2008. So I've, I've enjoyed very much uh, my days behind the microphone calling races. And uh, I've also been fortunate enough to call races around the world in the UK and New Zealand and various other parts of the world, which has been fantastic. Uh, auctioneering is a, is a lot of fun. The interaction between the, the vendors and the buyers, I've always enjoyed, enjoyed that. And then obviously the administrative role, which came later in my career, the last 16, 17 years or so. And I've really enjoyed that. You're not always everybody's pal, uh, but sometimes they're tough calls to make. But like I said earlier, the journey has been absolutely fantastic. The industry, the sport has been really good to me. Uh, obviously, my uh, responsibilities are starting to reduce now as uh, I turn 66 this year. Uh, so one always has to, to realise that the time to exit the stage is fast approaching and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to enjoy my racing in my post-retirement stage but also to a degree be involved. And now we've come to the big award of the evening, the horse of the year, and that is Rainbow Bridge. My legs are tired, my feet in pain, 
run through the fire and in the rain but to emerge as the best to be risking it all facing injury i'm running hard i'm running fast won't fall behind won't be the last it's worth the stress and misery when they see me running Victory, 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 victory. Well, congratulations to all concerned with our Equus Award champion for 2021, Horse of the Year, Rainbow Bridge. And an extra special shout out to our champion groom, Dumasani Banani, who looks after and cares for the Equus champion, Rainbow Bridge. Let's hear now from Eric Sands, the trainer of Rainbow Bridge. Eric, you must be delighted. Rainbow Bridge has been nominated for quite a few of the awards uh, at the e upcoming Equus Awards. And what a fantastic season you've had with them. Obviously, unlucky in the July, but up until then, cracking season. I've said it before, I'm blessed with that family. Um, the mayor's been phenomenal to me and uh, he's been a great horse. He's been uh, nominated for plenty of awards before. He's now a six-year-old and he's even been nominated. He deserves it, you know, he really deserves it. Uh, at the beginning of the year, he was so highly rated by Longines and I hear again now, um, that doesn't really count with me, you know. The code counts with me is what he gives me back and uh, he's just been phenomenal. Yeah, he certainly deserves it and he's given you two Mets, which has been absolutely amazing, hasn't it? Yeah, two Mets and a second in the Met, and uh, no, he's been uh, a dream, a dream, absolute dream. He's a lovely horse, lovely horse to watch, and he's got a nice nature, but uh, you look after him as well. He has a nice little holiday in between his seasons, and I believe he's out on the beach enjoying his, himself now. Yeah, he always, uh, before he, after the Cape season, he had a holiday at Julia Pulvey in Flames, Suttendal, when he came back from Natal the same. But he uh, got a foot abscess there twice now, and so we decided to send him to uh, Mandy Mason at Nurduk. Uh, I was very happy at Julia's place, but uh, he's happy where he is now, and he deserves it. You know, we all need to des deserve a break, and uh, uh, really great people to train for uh, the retros. No, um, they're just phenomenal people. They never interfere whatever I say. To take him out of the Champions Cup after nominating him this year, so Retro said, you do what you want, you know, it, uh, I was dreading the call. I just felt that uh, I look back on the records and that, and I look back on his performances in the Champions Cup. Uh, horses are tired after the July. So it looks like I did the right thing, and he's come back smiling. Yeah, absolutely right decision. He's having a nice holiday. He'll be back in training soon, and, and we'll hopefully look forward to seeing him for the Cape season again. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, get him ready for that. He's just uh, one of those horses, he's... Um, it's better with age it seems and of course it's uh mike and norma Rattray's dream to win the july that's what they really really want and of course you'll you'll give it another go i guess we'll see how it goes next year uh, take each step as it comes well jessica we've come to the end of the equus award ceremony for 2021 first of all thank you so much for joining us have you had fun i've had fun it's been such an honor to be part of it thank you so much neil and a wonderful season of racing and of course more to come of course because we head into the next season racing never ends and we wish everybody all the best for the forthcoming season all the best to everybody and congratulations to the winners there we go jessica matoang and myself neil andrews thanking you for watching and enjoying the coverage of our 2021 awards we congratulate all the equus awards winners as we do all the nominees in their achievements for 2021. <laughs>